This is News 8 Now, this morning. She should definitely be applauded for her action. It takes a lot of uh, strength to, to admit the wrongdoings of your organization, but it takes an even more amount to, to step down and try and take steps to right the wrongs. And what kids know is that this cancer is, is an illness. It's, it's something that has touched all of them. In some way or another, they know somebody that has some cancer. They don't know necessarily any more than that, but they know that they can help people and they can show compassion. They're working towards a new building so that we can have more opportunities for the community to come out and have working restrooms, indoor plumbing, those types of things, so we can keep giving back to the community. That is a preview of what we have coming up for you here on News 8 Now this morning. I'm Jordan Fremstead. And I'm Derek Sibley. Well, it is October 17th, yeah. 2022, and another Monday, mm -hmm. and a chance to recover Packer fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a Man, loss. Man, I was so, I was like, oh. no, they lost the Jets. Ugh. They are not good, folks. Oh, well, long <laughs> season. But yeah. uh, also, it seems like what isn't long, our fall season, with Oof. what we saw over the weekend. Derek. Yeah, definitely. And it's going to feel like more like fall again here today. It's going to be chilly. It's going to be cloudy. Pretty much, uh, you name it, we got it here uh, today. And temperatures, as you can see now on the map, are in the 30s. We got 36 degrees now in La Crosse and 34 in Eau Claire at the moment. It's uh, 34 degrees as well in Sparta here too. And yes, that is a change from the last 24 hours. In fact, we're about at least five to ten, uh, five to ten degrees cooler than this time yesterday morning. And it does feel like it's colder than the actual temperature when you factor in the wind speeds here at the moment. Uh, it feels more like the 20s here this morning with temperature with a feel like temperature of 25 degrees in Eau Claire at the uh, moment here too. Looking at some cloudy weather that uh, continues to move in from the north on the back side of a low pressure system and you can see that snowy weather across central Wisconsin as well to the east of us and it'll be staying that way throughout the day. As far as your day planner is concerned, looking at those clouds increasing through the day and temperatures into the upper 30s to low 40s, making it feel pretty gloomy, not to mention that the wind speeds will also pick up here through the afternoon as well. And we'll talk more about that in the full weather forecast a little bit later. Jordan. All right, thanks a lot for that update, Derek. Students at UW La Crosse are speaking out against messages on what they call hateful comments. The comments were chalked onto a campus walkway by the UWL College Republicans and make references to several topics, including anti-Semitism. News 8 Now's Dua Israr spoke to students who say the messages are disappointing. Differing opinions are welcome on a college campus, but some students say there is a line. I don't think it reflects us as a campus as a whole, and it just makes us all look bad. Earlier this week, the UWL College Democrats tweeted four pictures of statements written in chalk by the college Republicans. The messages make references to anti-Semitism, vaccines, gender and sexuality, and gun violence. Chair of the College Republicans, Megan Pauley, resigned shortly after and condemned those statements. She should definitely be applauded for her action. It takes a lot of uh, strength to, to admit the wrongdoings of your organization, but it takes an even more amount to, to step down and try and take steps to right the wrongs. Political science professor and First Amendment expert Howard Schweber says the college Republicans are protected under free speech. They absolutely were within their First Amendment rights to make those statements. Schweber says that doesn't mean they are protected from criticism. There's no First Amendment right to have your views welcome. Uh, when someone says your views are odious, that person is exercising their free speech rights, just as you are exercising your free speech rights. But it is absolutely the university's responsibility to try and make sure that students feel safe, uh, that students feel fully part of the community, and to express the institution's revulsion. UWL Chancellor Joe Gao sent a message to the community stating the university supports free speech and students' right to speak out if they choose to do so. The college Democrats criticized that message. Joe Gao did send out a message and it was pretty unclear. Jacob, a senior at UWL, says an apology from the college Republicans is not the entire solution. Yep, did it. Yep, it's all good now. Like, I can say whatever I want and then just apologize after, but I don't know if it's the, f the whole plan, but it could be part of it. Meanwhile, the college Democrats say they want students to be united against hate. And open a dialogue about what these statements mean um, and how we can heal. Reporting in La Crosse, the West Star, News 8 Now. Advisor for the college Republicans, Anthony Turgoski, has spoken out against the messages on Twitter. He says he will continue as the advisor only if the college Republicans apologize. 
The second and final debate for Wisconsin's U.S. Senate race featured more personal attacks between incumbent Republican Ron Johnson and Democratic challenger Mandela Barnes on Thursday night. Johnson brought up the lieutenant governor's communications degree and called him a performer. Barnes then claimed Johnson's biggest accomplishment was marrying into his plastic manufacturing business. From there, the candidates dove into topics like social security, abortion, and law enforcement. Abortion has been a highly discussed issue since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Barnes again called for a return to Roe v. Wade protections. I support us going back to Roe v. Wade. That was a law of the land that worked for 50 years. And Roe also allowed for some restrictions, but the reality is it has strong protections for the health and the life of the mother. And that's what we should be moving towards. In Johnson's response, he again called for voters to decide state policy by way of a referendum. To decide at what point does society have the responsibility to protect life, balancing the rights of a mother with the rights of an unborn child. I can't think of a better way of solving this problem once and for all where most people would accept the results. Now it is important to note that referendum process is not allowed under state law. A constitutional amendment would need to be passed. Johnson entered the debate with a 6% lead over Barnes among likely voters in the latest Marquette Law poll. In Madison, the tight race for Wisconsin governor uh, continues and so was a debate that was held on Friday. Incumbent Democratic Governor Tony Evers has focused his campaign on abortion rights and claims democracy is on the line. Republican challenger Tim Michaels has focused his race on crime saying Evers has failed to control it and with the margins being so close the amount of ad spending becomes even more significant. In fact national data shows the race spent more money last week than any other race, uh, governor race within the entire country. Former President Barack Obama is coming to the battleground state. The former president won Wisconsin twice by large margins. He is coming to the battleground state in the final days of the campaign to give a boost to the Evers and Mandela Barnes campaigns. He plans to hold an early vote event in October on the 29th in Milwaukee. A community school is looking to expand. Jennifer McKinney's parents created Cooley Christian School 40 years ago to provide a Christian faith-based school option for their children. The school has only grown since and has already moved once from downtown La Crosse to its current spot in West Salem. McKinney, whose kids now attend Cooley Christian, say the school has outgrown its current location. In recent years, Cooley has really seen an explosion in enrollment. In fact, there's waiting lists now and we could serve even more students um, with a bigger and more modern space. Enrollment has doubled over the past year and the school is looking to buy a new property. The hope is that moving will bring more space for more students and more opportunities overall. Advocates want to raise about $5 million in five months for that new location. La Crosse is playing host to more than 5,000 soccer players. Rush, Rush Wisconsin West held their sixth Cooley Cup this weekend, hosting 124 soccer teams from the U.S. and Canada. Rush Wisconsin is a youth soccer club for kids ages 4 to 18. The president says that the tournament has a lot to offer for spectators. Um, it's an opportunity for us to, uh, to share more about Rush Wisconsin West, but it's also an opportunity for kids in our club to play in front of their parents and uh, siblings and relatives, something they don't always get to do in this sort of capacity. The tournament wrapped up play on Sunday at different locations in Onalaska and La Crosse. Taking a walk down La Crosse's memory lane, Saturday was historic downtown day in La Crosse. Families got a look into the past with a historic tour of downtown. The all-day event included river cruises, carriage rides, and Segway tours. Families got plenty of opportunities to be creative with pumpkin painting, ukulele lessons, and more. Still to come here on your Monday morning news, after a four-month hiatus due to high floodwaters, Yellowstone National Park has reopened its gates. We'll explain just ahead. And Minnesota officials are urging residents to lower their water usage due to a potential drought. That's all coming up after the break. With that in mind, we are sending you to break with something to put the good in your Monday morning. Tis the season for ghosts and goblins, and in Duluth, a famous ship has become a destination for paranormal investigators. For decades, the William A. Irvin cruised across Lake Superior 
for one month a year, it turns into a nightmare of a tour. Mariners have been replaced by monsters with a legitimate scare around every corner. Ghost hunters also think the spirit of Captain Kidd still spends time in his quarters. About 20,000 people go through the haunted ship and paranormal tour each year. It is spooky season for sure. It is 10 after the hour and your latest forecast is just ahead here on News 8 Now this morning. We'll be right back right after this. City Cam 8 off to a quiet start this morning, but uh, very cold conditions here as we're currently into the 30s and a feel like temperature of the 20s when you factor in the wind speeds that we're currently experiencing here this morning as well. Looking at some cloudy weather that begins to move in now and we will be looking at some more clouds increasing throughout the day today and that should not allow our temperatures to really warm up that much as highs will only be into those upper 30s to low 40s in many spots in La Crosse County and same can be said further south here as well with 39 today in Gaze Mills and highs reaching only in 38 in uh, uh, Black River Falls, 38 as well in Warrens, and just shy of 40 if you're in Arcadia this afternoon. Eau Claire should be at 37 degrees, Stanley at 36, and Augusta at 37 under cloudy weather conditions. For your school cast, bundle up out there. It's 34 degrees here uh, as we head towards the morning hours, and 37 here for the cloudy skies and lunch hour. Afternoon, still looking cloudy and chilly. Temperatures at around 40 degrees. I'll be back with your for the forecast in just a bit. Yellowstone National Park was able to reopen its northeast entrance this weekend. A large portion of the park was closed four months ago after devastating flooding in June. High water cut off the park's main arteries and the small town along the southern or the northern gateway, I should say. Now, the Park Service chose to pave and expand the old Gardner Road to reconnect the park to Montana. Now, the National Park Service now says 99% of park roads are now operational. Apple workers in Oklahoma City have voted to form the second ever labor union at one of the company's U.S. stores. This comes four months after Apple store workers in Towson, Maryland formed Apple's first ever unionized U.S. location. The votes in Maryland and Oklahoma are more signs that organizing efforts are gaining traction in the tech and retail industries and elsewhere. Workers at both locations say they unionized to have more of a say in how their stores are run. The White House economic advisor Cecilia Rouse told CNN Sunday that there are signs the Federal Reserve's actions to tackle inflation are starting to take effect. It comes just days after a Labor Department report showed inflation is still high in September. No matter the time of year, Minnesota can experience drought conditions that affect many parts of the state. As Barrett Leone reports, parts of Minnesota must see a certain amount of rainfall before the end of the year. It's plain to see. Looking around, the grass is definitely not as green as it should be this time of year. Minnesota could use a big drink of water. Whether it's the height of the summer or the dead of winter, we could have drought conditions here in Minnesota. Everybody thinks that our water here in Minnesota is a bottomless pit, but uh, we soon realize that it's not when we're faced with these conditions. Right now, parts of southern Minnesota need to see 11 to 15 inches of precipitation before the end of the year. We have a lot of rainfall and, and snow to make up for uh, to, to kind of recover from this. So the state's asking residents to voluntarily cut back on water use. Every drop that we can conserve is, is a drop that can be used later on. Now the DNR tells us that the average Minnesotan uses 52 gallons of water per person per day, but there are ways to take that number down a bit. Things like uh, not having the water running when you're shaving or brushing your teeth, take shorter showers, try to uh, maximize the way you do laundry. A seemingly simple ask. They ask us to pitch in to help, uh, help out the state whatever way we can. Until we're back on track. If we get a healthy snowpack and we retain that snowpack over the winter, we could actually recover from the situation. Despite threats of a drought, officials are hopeful that a drought will not affect the state and residents. 
Pretty cold start this morning under cloudy skies. 36 degrees in La Crosse with northwest winds at 18 miles an hour. And it feels like it's 26 degrees here when you factor in the wind uh, speeds here this morning as well. Current actual air temperatures are into the 30s with 34 degrees in Eau Claire, 34 in Sparta. Uh, right at the freezing mark though if you're in Viroqua at 32 degrees. And we also have feel like temperatures this morning into the 20s all across the Cooley region. In fact, it feels like it's 23 degrees in Winona when you factor in the winds outside as well. We're on the back side of this low pressure system, which by the way is going to be responsible for bringing some lake effect snow, heavy lake effect snow that is across the upper peninsula of Michigan. In fact, computer forecast models indicate one to two feet of snow could fall through tomorrow. Now, luckily that system is well to the east of us. We're uh, pretty far west, so we're not really going to see a whole lot of moisture here. Instead, it's going to be pretty cold because we're looking at that northerly wind here in place. It's also dragging in some clouds here as well. So that's the only thing that we're going to be dealing with here as far as that low pressure is concerned. Just some clouds here across the area. High temperatures into the upper 30s to low 40s here today. Uh, going to be a pretty cold and cloudy, just overall gloomy day here uh, all across the viewing area here in uh, Eau Claire and uh, La Crosse. Uh, also, the wind speeds are going to be picking up, which is going to make things pretty chilly. We're expecting uh, 20 to 30 mile per hour sustained winds here today before calming down as we head into tonight and then the winds ramp back up again as we head into tomorrow with those 20 to 30 mile per hour sustained winds here yet again to work with before settling down here as we head into tomorrow night and then as we take into Wednesday you'll see that the wind speeds will not be as strong about 10 to 15 miles an hour and then calming down again as we head into Thursday night 5 to 10 mile per hour wind speeds there so it's going to take some time as we're kind of under the pressure gradient between that low here to the east and high uh, towards the west and you'll see that those clouds here will clear out as well as we head into tonight and we expect some sunny weather here as we head into Tuesday afternoon too and even into Tuesday night skies looking clear notice the high here towards the west as well that's going to begin to move in as that ridge here begins to take shape associated with the high and that's going to switch our winds here out of the west as we head into Wednesday and that's going to be a warming trend those westerly winds are going to help warm up our temperatures quite a bit in fact we expect highs in the 50s on Thursday followed by the 60s Friday and high temperatures this weekend could reach well into the 70s here as well. Low temperatures mainly in the 20s and 30s through Thursday morning. Stay with us though. Much more news and weather still to come right here on News 8 Now this morning. We're taking a quick break. Here's a look at what happened on this day in history. We'll be right back. Cloudy weather continues to filter in across the Cooley region from the north, and we're also looking at some chilly air moving in from the north as well. Bundle up out there. As you can see, we're looking pretty cloudy here this morning with current uh, temperatures into the 30s, 36 in La Crosse and 34 in both Winona and Eau Claire this morning. But it feels colder than that so when you factor in the wind speed. So bundle up out there as you head towards the morning uh, walk. Cloudy skies for the afternoon, and it looks like that trend continues as we head into your evening as well. If you're mowing the lawn today, bundle up here this morning and also around 11 o'clock as well. Might not be a bad idea to keep the jacket on with you too, uh, with uh, 3 o'clock looking cloudy and temperatures near 40. I'll be back with your commute forecast in just a bit. Yesterday was week six of the NFL season, and the Packers still had a lot to prove. Just three and two going into the day, the offense has not been up to standard and the Jets took advantage of it. We go to Lambeau Field. The New York Jets haven't won in Lambeau since 2006 and the Pack need a win bad. Offense was slow coming out of the gate and when they do get into field goal range, the Jets special team comes up huge with a blocked field goal. Next Packers drive and the handoff is fumbled, recovered by the Jets. One more look, just a sloppy handoff and it's costly. Jets get a field goal and Coach LaFleur not happy with the offense, really laying into them and on the next drive, Rodgers. Avoiding the sack here, just barely staying on his feet, looking downfield and finds Robert Tunyon for the first down. Packers get a field goal and go into halftime tied at three. Second half, Wilson fakes the handoff and that's Braxton Berrios on the end around, follows his blockers and nobody on Green Bay can get to him as he's all the way in for the score. Jets take the lead. Next drive, third down, Rodgers dropping back 
and is brought down by Quinn and Williams. And then on the punt, the Packers special team makes another mistake. The Jets get a blocked punt and then pick it up and take it all the way into the house for a touchdown. And just like that, Green Bay is down 14. Next Packers drive, Rodgers deep to Lazard and he's got it for a touchdown. They've been running this route all game and he finally gets it to work. Defense needing a stop, but the Jets offense has other plans. Brees Hall takes the handoff and the rookie takes this one all the way into the score. Green Bay, no one on Green Bay wanted to make a play there. The Packers offense can't get anything going and the Packers fall at home. It's their second straight loss and the offense just wasn't executing and some of the play calling was weird. Aaron Jones only had three touches in the first half and finished with just 19 yards. Randall Cobb also went down with an injury and the veteran wideout will be questionable going forward. But there's a lot of season left and there's still time for the offense to figure it out but they'll have to have a sense of urgency because they're on the road in D.C. next week and then in Buffalo taking on one of the best teams in football. That's all I have for now, but we'll have more on the Packers later this evening. Have a good day. Breaking overnight, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation says it will commit an additional $1.2 billion to the effort to end polio around the world. The announcement was made at the World Health Summit in Berlin. Part of that money will be used to stop outbreaks of new variants of the virus. The U.S. Border Patrol closed an international bridge after a Venezuelan migrant protest at the Mexican border. In a statement, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Office said they suspended traffic to ensure the safety of travelers. The closure of the border bridge comes after the Department of Homeland Security announced a new program aimed at Venezuelan immigrants. The migrants will be returned to Mexico if they cross the border illegally. You never know when snow will touch the ground, and many Minnesotans woke up to snow covering their lawns and streets over the weekend. Many saw up to an inch or more of snow, but made the most of it while it lasted. John Lauritsen has the story this morning. We are trying to look for uh, animals that are camouflaged, and we're learning about camouflage today. What is going on out here? These Richfield kindergartners likely didn't plan to have the camouflage they were looking for covered by snow. The flakes mixed in with the fall leaves made for a picturesque morning and a confusing one. Unexpected when we were walking to the bus stop and there was snow on the ground, so we had to go back inside and get our boots on. My seven-year-old, his name is Odin, and he thinks it's Christmas time now, he says, because These it's... poor kids are yeah. <laughs> because there's snow on the ground. Funny how the weather makes us skip a couple holidays. During a work week that started with 80 degrees and sun, finishing with cold and snow may be the most Minnesota thing of all. I was kind of shocked, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, my kids loved it. They said it was their favorite holiday of the year, her favorite time of the year with the snow. And maybe Mother Nature just created a new season, however short it might be. Winter maybe, fall yeah, and winter you combined? There you go. With a Finter. little bit of summer? Yep, I don't exactly. Know. Yeah, definitely. It's not too cold, it's not too hot. It's just snowing, and it's kind of uh, kind of odd. I wasn't expecting it to stick to the ground like it did. Connor Maloney is the maintenance man at Wood Lake Nature Center. He takes care of the trails and buildings. For a minute, Connor thought he was going to have to get out the shovels and fire up the snowblower, but by late morning, he realized he was in the clear. My wife's parents were in town from California, and they were here last week, and they got to really experience the, the beauty of the Minnesota fall. I kind of wish they were here to see the transition. Uh, and how drastic the changes can be. It is so Midwest. Well, the snowfall over the weekend marked one of the earliest starts to snow season in the Twin Cities weather history. Well, speaking of that winter weather, the holidays are still several weeks away, but a group of volunteers in Wausau are getting busy decorating. Thursday, the lights went up for the 17th annual Rotary Winter Wonderland. The light display is a food fundraiser that runs from Thanksgiving to New Year's Eve, similar to Rotary Lights here in La Crosse. Now, organizers say they'll set up about 2 million Christmas lights, which is why they started to set up so early. To get in, guests donate either canned goods or money to drive or walk through the Christmas light show. The demolition of the old coal-fired power plant in Genoa is all systems go.
On Friday, crews used explosives to take down multiple structures. Dairyland Power Cooperative decommissioned the plant in 2021. That plant was in use for 52 years. Dementia Awareness takes the spotlight. The Remember Project returned to the lacrosse area for two performances this week. The short plays, fortune cookies, and steering into the skid help bring awareness and resources to our community. After the performance, event organizers encouraged the audience to have a conversation about dementia. I would write down what you're experiencing and then having a conversation with your family or a trusted you know, individual in your life just to say, hey, I'm having some concerns. Um, and really just getting it checked out just to ease some anxieties. The Remember Project holds performances like these all across the state. The plays will return again in November. We have got more information you can check out at news8000.com. There is a new way to de-stress in downtown La Crosse. Garrison Therapies is bringing the first sensory de-stress float tanks to the Cooley region. Those tanks have a layer of plastic between the salt water so you stay dry during the session. The president of Garrison Therapy says floating can help people who are experiencing stress. I think that it could absolutely be preventative in regards to building resilience um, and preventing burnout. But if someone is already in burnout, this is a way for them to perhaps get themselves out of that fight or flight mode. Garrison Therapies has three float tanks. One of the tanks is a windowless room for a full sensory de-stress session. Horse Sense in Coon Valley saddles up for its fifth annual fall festival. On Saturday, guests got the chance to meet therapy horses and enjoy fall activities. Patients from the program also shared what Horse Sense means to them. The program helps people with disabilities while teaching important life skills. The executive director says that she hopes the program only grows. So all the proceeds for this go back into our program. Um, so of course our heart and desire is for it to grow into a you know, big event to raise lots of money for our program. But more than that, I think awareness is key. Horse Sense is taking donations on their website for riding equipment and money. We will have that link available on our website as well, news8000.com. One elementary school is helping beat cancer one painted pumpkin at a time. Westby Elementary held a pumpkin fundraiser on Friday to help raise money for two area women currently fighting breast cancer. While the kids may not understand what breast cancer is, the school principal says they understand what it means to help someone. And what kids know is that is cancer is, is an illness. It's, it's something that has touched all of them. In some way or another, they know somebody that has some cancer. They don't know necessarily any more than that, but they know that they can help people and they can show compassion. The auction items were all sold out, raising around $18,000. And the pumpkin love doesn't stop there. Valley Market in Coon Valley also showed off some of their best, and patrons had a chance to take part in a Guess the Weight contest. There is some optimistic news this Breast Cancer Awareness Month. U.S. death rates from breast cancer have dropped 43%. Studies also show that survival rates after diagnosis have gone up. New technology and more aware awareness has helped with that, and Mayo Clinic Health System experts say there are always ways to improve. In the setting of breast cancer, absolutely, there's always more we can do. We have um, become very um, knowledgeable about the importance of screening. We have had improved um, awareness of treatments of breast cancer and opportunities for treatment. Experts say the best way to prevent breast cancer is to stay healthy and active and limit alcohol and always contact your doctor if you notice any changes. According to the American Cancer Society, over 40,000 people will be diagnosed in 2022. It is also known, uh, that is liver cancer, it's also known to be one of the most deadly cancers ever, and there's only a 10% chance of survival after five years. Doctors are focusing on studying models of liver and pancreatic cancer cells to develop new treatment strategies that also predict setbacks and challenges. Although stepping out in pink was rained out last month, one area family decided to take the walk into their own hands. One woman's sister was determined to not let the rain stop them from walking on Saturday morning. Dozens of people turned up to walk with them for cancer awareness. Jackie Sands has been breast cancer free now for almost three years, and for her, she wants others to learn about self-examinations for cancer. 
I was 34 when I was diagnosed. Um, my doctor didn't think that there was really anything to worry about. Luckily, I went on for further testing um, and got my diagnosis and was able to get treatment right away. Jackie's family, friends, and coworkers walked the route that Steppin' Out in Pink had originally planned. They hope to take part in the event next year when it returns in September. Spooky season was off to an early start this year. On Saturday, area children got into the Halloween spirit at a family-friendly festival. Families got to celebrate the spooktacular Halloween party in Clearwater Farm in Onalaska. There was plenty of candy, animals, and a costume contest for kids to enjoy. Event organizers say it was a success this year, and they're hoping to make it even bigger. They're working towards a new building so that we can have more opportunities for the community to come out and have working restrooms, indoor plumbing, those types of things, so we can keep giving back to the community. If you missed the spooktacular, no need to worry. Clearwater Farm still has plenty of events coming up. We've got more details at news8000.com. Well, this morning we are definitely waking up to some cloudy weather conditions, as you can see here from satellite and radar. But it's not just that, we're also waking up to cold temperature readings here too, as the current conditions are into the 30s with feel like temperatures well into the 20s. 41 degrees today, mostly cloudy and chilly conditions, north-northwest winds 20 to 30 miles an hour, so pretty strong there. For tonight, we're down to 24, mostly clear and much colder too. North-northwest winds a little bit lighter, but still breezy at times, 10 to 20 miles an hour. As far as your drive cast goes, you may need that heater on mostly uh, sunny skies here in some spots, but we do expect mainly cloudy skies to take over, especially by the lunch hour and expect overcast conditions to continue as we head into the evening with uh, things remaining quite chilly outside as well. I'll be back with a final check on your four weather forecast in just a bit. Jordan. Thanks a lot, Derek. Some of your people's favorite entertainers are on YouTube and for National Pasta Day, we sought out the pasta queen herself. Your latest buzz report is just ahead here on News 8 Now this morning. We'll be right back right after this. Sure, are pretty cloudy, but also cold start this morning as temperatures are at 36 degrees, both here in downtown and at the airport. Northwest winds 18 miles an hour, making it feel like it's 26 degrees outside. Meanwhile, in Eau Claire, it's 34 degrees and cloudy there as well. Northwest winds a bit breezy at around 13 miles an hour. And the reason why it's a bit breezy is because we're kind of under the pressure gradient between this low pressure system towards uh, the east, which, by the way, is wrapping around some precipitation on the back side. And in fact, the peninsula of Michigan, upper peninsula, that is, could be looking at between one to two feet of snow uh, between today and tomorrow. So that is that lake effect going on there. We're also watching high pressure towards the west. So we're kind of in between those two systems now, which is helping to force in some of that cold air from the north and also create again that pressure grading effect, making it pretty breezy. Cloudy skies here moving in as well. You can see that snow and rain well towards our east. That is not bothering us as it continues to stay well to the east across central Wisconsin. Let's take a look at the temperatures across the area, mainly into the 30s this morning. Definitely going to need a jacket out there as uh, we're looking at some pretty uh, chilly conditions. We got wind chill factors this morning into the 20s all across the Cooley region. Forecast high temperatures today not warming up too much only into those upper 30s to low 40s uh, today under those mainly cloudy and chilly conditions all throughout the day cast and then by 9 o'clock we're partly cloudy. We may see some breaks in the clouds by that point. Temperatures around 34 degrees. Also want to mention too that wind tracker showing us that's going to be pretty gusty here today. 20 to 30 mile per hour sustained winds before settling down here as we head into this evening and then the winds uh, ramp up again as we head into tomorrow. Northwest winds 20 to 30 once again making it pretty chilly during the day and then by tomorrow night the winds begin to settle down. Uh, before the winds pick up slightly as we head into Wednesday, not as strong as today or tomorrow at around 10 to 15 and then 5 to 10 mile per hour wind speeds as we head into Wednesday night to early Thursday. So those clouds again here uh, throughout the day, as you can see, and then we start to see a decrease in the clouds as we head into uh, tonight into early uh, Tuesday, and then it looks like though sunny weather conditions will prevail high pressure to our west. You can see that clockwise wind flow uh, towards the west of us should begin to move in to help get rid of the clouds, giving us mainly sun 
sunny and dry conditions here to work with, but pay attention to the wind direction arrows coming out of the west as we head into Wednesday. That's important because it's going to help warm us up later this week, especially Thursday, but well into Friday. We could be looking at highs into the 60s and this weekend. Yeah, we could be as warm as the 70s before our next cool down arrives after that, but that's not until uh, as we head into early next week with low temperatures into the 20s and 30s here through at least uh, Thursday and Friday morning. In our buzz report this morning, the final showdown between Lori Strode and Michael Myers slashes the competition away. Halloween ends begins its run in first place with $41.3 million. Less than expected, but still the best debut of any film since Nope back in July. Nadia Muno says she lives by the quote, life is a combination of magic and pasta. In her hit YouTube series and her debut cookbook coming out November 8th, the Pasta Queen urges fans to take water, eggs, and flour to make their own pasta. We have got a few birthdays to celebrate this morning. Yeah, happy 88th birthday to Dot. She is a wonderful person who is a big Packer and Badger fan. Dot, I'm sorry that the Packers and Badgers <laughs> could not deliver a birthday victory this weekend. <laughs> well, it's still early in the season, right, Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> At least you got the right teams there, though. Yeah. Happy 88th birthday to Janelle this morning. She enjoys bird watching, reading, and spending time with her great grandchildren. And happy 8th, eight years to Ella. She is outgoing and a great gymnast. Now, if you know a special someone turning eight months, eight years, 18, 80 years old, or 88 years old soon, make sure you let us know. Yeah, just upload their photo to our website. It's news8000.com and look for the submit pictures button. That's under the home tab on our website. Well, so much for fall. <laughs> it feels like winter, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we got your latest forecast and everything you need to know this morning in five minutes or less. Your morning news now is up next. Your morning news now on this Monday. Last week, the UW Lacrosse Democrats tweeted four pictures of statements written in chalk by the college Republicans. The messages make references to anti Semitism, vaccines, gender and sexuality, and gun violence. Chair of the University of Wisconsin Lacrosse's college Republicans, Megan Polly, resigned shortly after condemning the statements. UWL College Democrats say they appreciate Polly for stepping down. She should definitely be applauded for her action. It takes a lot of uh, strength to, to admit the wrongdoings of your organization, but it takes an even more amount to, to step down and try and take steps to right the wrongs. UWL Chancellor Joe Gao sent a message to the UWL community stating the university supports free speech and the right to speak out. College Democrats criticized the message stating it was unclear. They say they want students to be united against hate. Last week, the battleground state of Wisconsin had a couple of battles for the 2022 midterm elections. The second and final debate for Wisconsin's U.S. Senate race featured more from incumbent Republican Ron Johnson and Democratic challenger Mandela Barnes on Thursday night, where the candidates dove into topics like Social Security, abortion, and law enforcement. And in Madison, in a tight race for Wisconsin governor, another, uh, the only debate in that race was held. Incumbent Democratic Governor Tony Evers has focused his campaign on abortion rights, while Republican challenger Tim Michaels has focused his race on crime. Looking a little cloudier here now this morning, and those clouds will continue to thicken as we progress through the day today. High temperatures only into the upper 30s to low 40s, staying cold and a bit windy. Dementia Awareness gets the spotlight. The Remember Project returned to the La Crosse area for two performances this week. The short plays, fortune cookies, and steering into the skid are an effort to bring awareness to resources in our community. After the performance, event organizers encourage the audience to have a conversation about dementia. Last month it rained out for stepping out in pink, but one area family decided to take the walk into their own hands. One woman's sister was determined to not let the rain stop them from walking. On Saturday morning, dozens of people turned up to walk with them for cancer awareness. Jackie Sands has been breast cancer free now for almost three years, and for her, she wants others to learn about self-examinations for cancer. I was 34 when I was diagnosed. Um, my doctor didn't think that there was really anything to worry about. Luckily, I went on for further testing. Um, and got my diagnosis and was able to get treatment right away. Jackie's family, friends, and co-workers walked the route that Stepping Out in Pink had originally planned. They hope to take part in the event again next year in September. 
There's a new way to de-stress in downtown La Crosse. Garrison Therapies is bringing the first sensory de-stress float tanks to the Cooley region. These tanks have a layer of plastic between the salt water so you stay dry during the session. As you head out the door this morning, keep in mind it's a bit blustery out there. Temperatures in the 30s with the wind speeds picking up today as well. Cloudy and chilly throughout the day. Highs only around 41 degrees this afternoon. So much for fall. Yep. we got winter temperatures <laughs> it's like now. like winter. A tease to what's coming, I guess. Yeah, right? And then we'll get a 70 degree day in yeah, December. That's right. how it always works. <laughs> this weekend can uh, be in the 70s. There we go. <laughs> My case rests. <laughs> Don't forget to keep up with the news of the day at news8000.com. And of course, we'll have the latest coming up this afternoon on News 8 Now at noon. We hope you have a great day. CBS Mornings follows us here.